let's get into today's news. It's the 27th of August. The crypto markets have gone down a little bit. We've got some NFT mintings that are happening that are not going well. DeFi, I think, is going to boom significantly, and I'm very bullish on one particular token. I'll tell you what, let's dive in. Firstly, let's, of course, just quickly head over to CoinGecko, where in the top 100, there's nothing much pumping, right? You'll see outliers with random uh, meme coins, but in general, it's it's a little bit of a red day. Bitcoin and ETH down uh, a little bit. ETH down quite a bit, actually. Sol is down from 160 down to 154. However, I'm pretty sure we are entering the banana zone. Let's go back to Jamie. So Jamie, just as a reminder, he's the chief crypto analyst at Real Vision. Real Vision is like a, a company and the founder of that is Raul Paul. Raul Paul is a macro investing genius, in my opinion. So all this points out, this is from August 14th, all it points out is that when the US dollar weakens, Bitcoin goes up. When it breaks this trend line, it goes up. That's what basically, that's the TLDR. So this was from the 14th of August and here we have it right now uh this is a 20 so it broke and bitcoin went up so this is 63,000. go back 58,000. so that's one very easy thing just to keep in mind and if it continues to break we'll continue to go higher nothing of course is financial advice but this is basically what Raul paul refers to as the banana zone so up up we potentially can definitely go and that's what i think is going to happen I don't necessarily think it's going to happen uh in september but from quarter four it will be hold on to your socks. So if you're DJing, DJing into meme coins or things that maybe they pay off for a very short period of time, it might be a good idea to consider starting to take some profits, put them into stables, and then start accumulating the things you're after. Nachi, remember, this is uh, someone that my researcher found recently, who's Binance top trader by profit and loss. Just transparently, just a screenshot of his positions. His size is not our size, right? Uh, a million dollar profit, half, and so on. So we, like basically everything long, right? Everything just uh, long and only a couple of things are failing. Just Sui and uh, a TIA. The other thing to keep in mind is you can see his leverage is normally 2 to 5x max. He's got a couple of 10x's there. But just keep in mind that top traders, they don't go high with leverage. Now let's talk about stablecoins because as stablecoins increase, money comes into the market from organizations and, and VCs and trading funds and hedge funds and things like that, and that gets deployed. And we've just seen the total market cap of crypto stablecoins hit a two-year high. So this signals to me that we're back on. We're definitely back on. The surprising thing is this is almost 170 billion, which is brilliant. And if we fade all the way out to when everything just kind of collapsed, this also would have included UST, which was just an absolutely rubbish stablecoin in hindsight. But all the way back here, like we're still in this bullish period, actually. This is uh, when Luna just kind of absolutely collapsed, I'm guessing. I thought it was a little bit earlier, but either way, you know, 2021 was still this bull market and it was crazy. And then 2022, there were still things hanging around and other plays that were happening just not ETH and BTC or Solana. However, if we have a look at Solana, yes, the change is brilliant, but we're only at $4 billion, $4 billion. And I don't know if we can see when, like the actual market, like how many stable coins were on Solana in the previous cycle, not easily anyway. All I know is that in the previous cycle, you know, a lot of money started to rotate out, right? I don't like here, November 18, just almost a billion dollars of liquidity. And now it's been coming in, coming in, coming in. But it'd be really great if we could get this to maybe $50 billion or more this cycle. That would be a big ask, but I think possible. Now, here's something interesting about pol politics. So nearly half of all the corporate money that's being pumped into this year's election is coming from the crypto industry. So there are people on both sides really trying to shape how this goes. But I do think you know, that we're going to get positive, we're going to get positive legislation out of this. And with that positive legislation, we should hopefully do really well. Next bit of news, uh, PayPal PYUSD stablecoin recently surpassed a $1 billion market cap. So growing, growing, just as a reminder, this has uh, just got a, a message from the researcher who's confused something. This, all my USDC that I have in my wallets, I'm moving to PYUSD and I'm flicking to Lulo or Camino or something because I, you just get a decent return on it. People keep on asking in comments still if it's, if it's a safer hold. It's not as safe as USDC, but I still deem it safe. But if it's not something that you want to risk because you see that it's a token 2022 stand, which I have no issues with, then of course don't hold it. But PayPal is a reputable company. 
they're not going to try and hurt their target audience because then they will fail. They'll completely lose to crypto. They'll completely lose to Venmo and Cash App and all those things. Camino has 45% of all circulating PYU. And I mentioned in yesterday's video, the 10K to 100K challenge, which you, you should check out, that I'm properly bullish on Camino and I'm buying more of the Camino token. I don't want to ruin too much in this, so go watch that. I'm also working on, with the team, a tokenomics breakdown. And I'm pretty sure that uh, the Camino token from here until maybe uh, March next year, it will outperform Solana. And that's ultimately what our goal is, right? Uh, what is this? And also with Camino, we've got $100 million PYUSD borrowed capacity now available. So if you go to Drift, or maybe Margin 5, but definitely if you go to Drift, there's nothing that you can actually go and withdraw against. You can't go and deposit your soul and withdraw PYUSD because there's no liquidity, or there wasn't very recently. Now you've got a massive amount that you can withdraw. It's at 4%, which is low. This is decent. This is lower than everything else. You'll be paying 11% for USDC and USDT at almost 14%. So even at 4%, even if this slowly grinds up, as long as it's less than this, it's it's a win in my book. Margin Fi lending borrow capacity for PYUSD has been increased as well. Uh, it's, it's yielding 15%. The only reason I would say use Margin Fi over Camino is because they haven't released a token yet. And so maybe the fact that they haven't released this token could be an opportunity. They've had PR issues and they haven't sorted them out. They're not bringing anything to the table. And I don't want to be mean to anybody, actually. But I think when mistakes are made, you need to be really, really transparent. And if they did err, if they did fix it up, and I just have missed it, then I'm sorry, I've missed it. I'm just having a quick look at this here, just to find Solana, precious Solana, and see what their TVL is, because they had more TVL than Camino, right? Camino is now at 1.6, and they just haven't grown in TVL, and this is the uh, this is the issue. Let's have a look at Margin Fi. So they're at a massive amount, and then they dropped, and then they built it up a little bit, and now it's just gone. So they've lost trust that it's worth using their DAP, which is really sad. This, on the other hand, they accumulate more, accumulate more, some, some little dips here, and they're back at like 1.6. So from December last year, 33 million to here, 1.6 billion. Now, remember, you've got less than a couple of hours now to actually vote on the current microgrants proposal. It's right here. If you vote, remember, you need to vote before this deadline, two hours, 48 minutes. Otherwise, you will not get any active staking rewards for this. So remember with dupe, even if the dupe token doesn't go up as fast as we want it to, the thing is, when you work out the rewards you get, it's something along the lines of like, 80% APY. So a compounded rate is like 80% in terms of the extra rewards that you're getting. So I think in terms of rewards for the first, like the first quarter, it was around, it was like 25% or something. And then you'll get less and less as more and more people stake, but it's very decent. Quick trip to the Solana crypto calendar. This has been reworked and it should be available for release in the new form tomorrow. And then when people have things to submit, they can submit, they'll be reviewed by the team and then put into there. Come on down, 27th. All right, so we've got PayPal. As mentioned, the vote ends 4 p.m. Uh, and a few other things. Just a reminder, clone protocol, get your funds out. And always a reminder, daily reminder, if you're dollar cost averaging into Sol or getting more Sol, don't leave it in your wallet idle. Stake it. Stake it with validator.com. Now, Pine Analytics, they've also got a little bit of a blurb on this proposal of the budget for $150,000. But this fund is exclusively allocated to finance approximately 15 to 30 micro grants. So if you have something that can expand the reach of the Jupiverse. Once this is approved, and it will be approved by Flying Colors. Jump in, put a proposal together. You'll get a microgram for full context. It's not going to compensate you for your time, but if you can produce good results, then you could go and get an extension and so on. A little bit of checking on DBR's launch. Uh, I just want to say that I still don't know anything about the tokenomics. So I'm bullish on DBridge. I'm not bullish on their tokenomics. And like, what can we use this token for? Why should we be holding it? I guess, you know, that comes as speculation in many other regards. But the issue with this is we don't have like a good, we don't have an earlier example that does really well. So W token didn't do well. All bridge didn't do well. Uh, quite a few bridges have actually been hacked. And so their token just worthless. Why Camino, even though there's like, we don't know exactly how it's going to be used. We know it's going to have a governance aspects. We know there's going to be creator grants uh, and things like that. But why we don't have why do, why I don't have the same sort of hesitancy is I know that Ave as a token does very, very has done very very well, and I know that Camino will probably end up getting twenty five percent of the TVL. I think that Ave has, and that's why. I can see this. Anyway, what they're basically doing is building a really proper launch pad because there's so many different wallets that need to interact with this, uh, EVMs as well as Solana. 
Trazer and Ledger, they don't support message signing, so they're working on some things. So initially it was said they'll launch end of this year, sorry, end of this month. We're almost there now. They're clearly not going to be launching. So probably first week of September or, or something like that. Parcel, they have a post-mortem on their security update with a DNS attack. And Simon's cat token, $24 million worth of cat tokens uh, has just been burnt removing 10% of supply forever, which is crazy. And I did mention that I'm not using the Flocky trading bot anymore because I kind of missed it on the first few days. But now they've gone and extended it. So I'm going to stay in and I'm going to go and just swap back probably like $2,000 worth a day. I'm going to spend like $20 on fees, something like that, $20, $30 on fees. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do it because maybe that cat airdrop is going to be worth more. And if not, then I'm okay with that. Ideally, if I could buy a little bit lower, sell a little bit higher, that would be even better. Adestrea Finance, they're going to be rebranding. I won't mention anything about that until they have made it public, but they've just done their audit. They're going to be more, far more in the space as NX Finances, as Camino Multiply. And we covered it the other day, but Mango Markets, they launched a new product, uh, something to do with yield. But basically, this all relates to the JLP token. The JLP tokens properly hop. If anyone has any questions at the end of this live stream, you can ask me. But JLP is something that I want to have a lot more exposure to. Dflow is a dApp that I do not use ever. I, it was pushed a lot, but I think it was pushed a lot because of their points farming program as opposed to proper like product market fit that really makes a big difference. That's just my opinion. It's only available on phone as well, which I don't like. Either way, the news is you have to transfer your old account in the app in order to start a migration process if you are using this. NX Finance, they're going ahead with their launch, and uh, I think it's maybe a little bit too premature. It's a hard time to launch right now. I think waiting till October would be far more like like ready, but that's just my opinion. Either way, if you want to get qualified for this, you need to hold 500,000 NX points before 31st of August or be a qualified community member. So if, if you're keen, uh, and there's a 20% boost rush if you want to join my team, you just sign up, you uh, put in Seb Monty as your team, and I've got a tutorial on it. Go and check it out. I do like what NX Finance have built, and they do have an audit, and they've been taking on feedback. I'm just surprised to see them pushing in for a launch of the token right when tag, right when like, it's just not good sentiment. They also have Zealy Quests if you want to do them as well. Pathfinders are minting today. No one actually said, no one properly said, or at least I didn't read it or see it, uh, if I should be minting. So I didn't mint, I had, had held one. I can mint still if I want. It's if it's minting. I know what they're doing is different. I think what they're doing is really cool. Uh, I mean, given that you can always take your soul out, probably worth just speculate, like not even speculating, just be just give something a bit of a go. If not, entities are just not hot right now. They've got a cool website, and maybe uh, maybe this is worth it. I'm going to mint one with two path soul. Also, the Herman's Club. I spoke about this. People ask questions, and I said the reason why. I think it could be valuable, but I also said NFTs are not back. This is the most hyped NFT mint of late, right? And it has not minted out anywhere near. So they sold half in pre-sale. So they've sold about a thousand cents. And it's just, it's just, it's a challenging time. It's not going to be an easy time to mint for anything for anything. DeFi is basically where the gains are until things start to move. Either way, when, when they go into secondary, I think it'll be below soul, below this 1.5 soul, and I'll pick one up. I'll pick one up just to support them because I think I like him. I like him. I'd like to be part of that group in some small capacity. Solana's DeFi TVL has surged to 5.47 billion. And this is the thing. NFTs are not dead. They're just very, very quiet. This is where the attention, I think, should be on DeFi, on staking your soul, accumulating soul, and going further and further. And base L2 has just hit 1 million in daily active addresses for the first time ever, which means we now have to put on attention onto base. I covered base a long time ago, and I said why I thought this would be like one of the, one of the, the blockchains to actually not rival Solana, but one that we'd want to play on in addition to Solana. And now that I've got an insane amount of people, which I think a lot of them would be bots still, which is fine. Same thing on, on Solana. I think this is a good place to start playing. The Ton blockchain also failed their stress tests. You may have heard about the dog's airdrop. If not, you can look into it yourself. I haven't covered it. There's so much content on it. There's no real point in trying to capture that the views there. But uh, with dogs, the longer you had your telegram was one indicator, and I got locked out of a previous telegram. So this current telegram didn't have a, a massive allocation. I don't know the other ways in which you could, could have received it, but basically they've been maxing out at 280 transactions per second when the claim theoretical was 55,000. 55,000 as a theoretical, Solana has the same thing and, it's, and it can't achieve that. So 280 isn't bad, but either way, they've had a little bit of a, a stress test over there. Uh, and basically Telegram Wallet said the release of dogs caused several crypto exchanges and some wallet functions to not work. That is not bearish. That is 
completely fine with me. This happened with Solana and Solana did fine. Now, there's one other thing that I would like to mention today at 3.20 p.m. UTC. I'll be doing uh, a live stream with Solana ID and we'll just be talking about what is their product, why should you use it, you know, what's happening with their IDEO, etc. Similar to how we did ReDAO yesterday, this is not me shilling or trying to even give like a voice to shill. It's more like a bit of a Twitter space, but done on video. That's what the goal is, just to highlight some projects. People can watch them, ideally within like 20 to 30 minutes, get all the alpha. If they like it, they can jump in. I don't know enough about it to really see how valuable it is. And that's why I want to learn and find out. Let's jump in to some actionables. So the most important thing, of course, is the dupe G vote is live and ends today. Check all your wallets, make sure you do that. If you don't do that, you're missing on active staking rewards. Don't want to do that. Remove your liquidity and claim rewards on clone. Deadline apparently today. Stake 1 million, 1 million bonk with bonk rewards for 12 months to get that bonk dragon attribute. I think it's by the end of the month, but I'd prefer if you just did it now. Remember PYUSD borrow APY on Camino. Also, you can get some from MarginFi if you're keen. And Tyler has just mentioned, a researcher, MarginFi's LST LTV is higher than Camino's. So Camino has 55% for Gito Soul. So if you've got $1,000 worth of Gito Soul, you can borrow 550 PYUSD. Whereas with MarginFi, it's 75% for Gito Soul. So that's one, uh, probably the only reason why I'd use MarginFi over if I wanted to extract a little bit more value. But I don't even like to come anywhere close to LTV. Airdrop actionables, Flocky on Binance. Uh, one thing one person mentioned is that they were in the UK and the, they're in the UK, they use Binance and they not give the cat's airdrop because it was blocked because of regulations. So if you are in a country where regulations are high, like the US and UK and other territories, then yeah, you'll probably want to just play on the blockchain itself because you're just going to be blocked. Uh, remember, hold a minimum of $100 of Flocky on BNB ETH and I'm not going to mention this again. So August 29th. Deposit into Camino's Geo Soul Soul Media Pool. Remember, just you want some exposure to MetPoints and stake 20 million bonk with bonkrewards.com for future airdrops. That's everything today. If you can, tune in later to the Solana ID live stream and we'll ask any questions to them at the end of that live stream as well. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.